and welcome back to Inside the 20. Today we'll be going over the stats, uh, the scores, my thoughts on pros and cons from every NFL team, and what we learned from week one. Um, yeah, pretty much. Bears get a home win against the Titans, 24-17. to The Titans, Tony Pollard had a very solid showing. He was very productive. That was a huge factor for Tennessee, even though they lost. Then the biggest question is going to be Will Levis for the Titans. Um, we'll just have to see if he can really step up and take Tennessee to the next level if they really want to be a playoff contender in this very, very stacked AFC South division. And then moving on to the Bears, um, the defense really stepped up as well as the special teams in this game. The special teams, they had a punt block um, return for a touchdown. That really set the tone in the second half for the um, Chicago comeback. And then I mean, the defense was also very good in the second half. Um, and I think that was one of the biggest reasons why they were able to win. Something that I thought they could have improved on, um, two things here. Um, the offense in the first half was not very good. And the time possession that they had was very poor. It was incredibly lopsided if you actually look at the stats. So they do have something to clean up, but a solid week one win for the Chicago Bears. And then moving on, we have the Saints destroying the Carolina Panthers. A 47-10 to blowout win at home. For the Panthers, I mean, Bryce Young, it was absolutely horrible. He couldn't throw a ball in the defense, obviously. I mean, you give him 47 points. I mean, it's not like your defense was good. Um, So horrible by Carolina there. I mean, I really have nothing positive for them, to be honest. I mean, nothing at all. Like I said, Bryce was horrible in the defense. The running game couldn't do anything. Receivers couldn't catch. It was sad. Uh, moving on to the Saints, Derek Carr in the offense excelled, and so did the defense, obviously. I mean, they won 47-10, to 10, so I mean, scoring 47, that's pretty solid showing. Again, I don't have anything negative for the Saints. I mean, they really showed out, and they really did really well um, in this game. So moving on to the Vikings, blowing out the Giants on the road, 28-6. to Sam Darnold did absolutely incredible in this game. Um, obviously, with no J.J. McCarthy, he will be out for the entire season. And so I think that's really big um, for him to step up like that and have a really good showing against a solid defense in the Giants. Negative for the Vikings, um, I would say he did throw an interception, but if you really look at it, he didn't do too bad, and the interception did come off of a Dexter Lawrence. I think his arm was hit or something. He, But yeah, a lot of pressure there, but again, Vikings did very well. Uh, big win. And the move of the Giants come in this game. The Giants, the O-line was very good, um, but sadly, Daniel Jones could not, I mean, I don't even know how to put it, he could not play well. He, I think he had two picks for a touchdown. His completion percentage was not good. Um, he did have, like I think, like 150, 200 yards, so okay, but definitely needs to step it up if these Giants are going to actually compete in a very loaded NFC East division especially with the Eagles and the Cowboys up there. Um, but yeah, that is the Vikings and the Giants. Moving on to the Bills and the Cardinals. The Cardinals. Murray had a very good showing, even though they lost. He was consistently throwing dots, uh, scoring, running, in touchdowns. Um, I thought it was very good uh, by Murray, even though they lost again. But solid showing there uh, to start out the season, especially against a solid Bills team. And then moving on to the Bills. Josh Allen was really, really good in the win. Um, he ran in for a touchdown. He threw for a couple touchdowns. Very solid. The defense was mediocre, okay. I mean, they were down like 14, I think, 17 maybe at one point. So it wasn't the prettiest thing. But in the second half, towards the end of the game, I mean, they really stepped it up. And I think that was one of the main reasons why the Bills won. Moving on to the Patriots. They stunned the Bengals. On the road, the Patriots 16, the Bengals 10. It was a very bad day for Bengals fans, uh, me especially. The Bengals did not 
do good and by any means they were horrible the offense just couldn't move the ball joe burrow did have a solid showing his completion percentage was way up um, and he had some very nice dump offs and some very solid plays he also used his legs a lot which was very good um and then on the downside defense they need to fix something blue i mean gotta have a talk with that guy i i don't know what happened Bengals could not defend the run and then whenever they passed we were always like whoa what's happening um and so the Bengals, not very good not not very good and then for the patriots ramonja stevenson was incredible um he just kept running 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 all over the Bengals. it was very good and i think that was one of the biggest reasons why they were able to move down the field early um, and ultimately win the game over the Bengals. Jacoby Brissett, he was solid, but he definitely had some room for improvement. And I think that can be one of the things they work on in practice this week um, to improve their next game. Moving on, you have the Texans and the Colts. Texans 29, Colts 27. I mean, the offense was very strong in the win. CJ Stroud, Joe Mixon, Stephon Diggs, Nico Collins, Tank Dell. They all, they all were great. The offensive line, even, they were solid. And then a downside, um, the defense could have been better, obviously only winning by two um, and almost putting up 30 points. Again, it was like a back-to-back-to-back type scoring thing. So I think the defense could have been better. They were good. They just weren't incredible. Um, they definitely have some room for improvement. And then for the Colts, um, the pass rush was great. They had a couple of sacks, ton of QB pressures, ton of QB hits. Um, everybody seemed like on the defensive line was getting into action, even sometimes the middle linebackers. Um, so very solid by the defense and the pass rush. The secondary could have been better for the Colts. They got beat deep a couple of times by the Texans, um, but it was still solid. Moving on to the Dolphins and Jaguars. Okay, so... For the Jaguars, I mean, the defense was solid, okay, mediocre. Um, Again, just like the Texans and Colts, it was just like a back-to-back-to-back scoring type thing. So, I mean, it, this could be a thing that they work on in practice over the next couple of weeks to improve. Something that I saw that was a downside, Travis Etienne, um, he had two critical turnovers, a fumble in the end zone, and then he ran a fourth and one. He got a pitch and just kind of ran around for a couple of seconds before, I think he lost like four or five yards. It was not good, not very good, but definitely have to clean that up. Uh, But overall, good game for the Jaguars. I know that's on the road. Miami's a tough place to play, especially when they have 75-degree sidelines. You have 612-degree sidelines. It's kind of unfair. Then for the Dolphins, rushing attack was great. They have such a great wide receiving core and a solid young quarterback who can Definitely hit you over the top. Um, a con I saw was the defense was okay in the win. Again, just like the Jaguars, it was back-to-back-to-back-to-back. To back to back to back. Definitely low, lower scoring than the Texans and Colts game, but still definitely could have been better. Moving on to the Steelers and the Falcons. This was a great game in Atlanta. The Steelers did come out with a win, though, winning 18-10. to I'm the only AFC North team that actually won. Um, the Steelers, fields played great. I think it was like 30, 45 minutes before the uh, kickoff on Sunday. Um, the world was informed that Justin Fields would be the starter, even though uh, Russell Wilson was named the team starter. But because he had an issue with his calf, Justin Fields is the starter. Um, and he played great. Uh, but on the other hand, for the Falcons, Kirk, Kirk O'Chains did not play great. Uh, his first game as a Falcon, he threw two costly interceptions. And just was not thinking with his head. It was a not a very pretty game for the offense. Though Bijan did do very well. Uh, rushed for like 70 yards, 80 yards, I think. Moving on to the Chargers-Raiders game. The Chargers won 22-10 to at home against the Raiders. Uh, for the Chargers, the run game was great. Uh, I think that was why they were able to win the game. Um, and then a problem that the Chargers had was... Third down conversions. They were 0-7 on third down conversions in the first half. Horrible. Um, obviously, they were still able to win, but definitely have to clean that up in practice. For the Raiders, um, Gardner was strong in the L. Um, he was also 
uh, in a QB battle uh, with uh, Aiden O'Connell in the offseason, but he ended up winning and had a very strong showing. The O-line was a problem, um, allowing many sacks. I think it was four or five sacks, a ton of QB pressures, ton of QB hits. They definitely have to clean that up um, and just, you know, help out Gardner. What did he ever do? Moving on to the Broncos-Seahawks game. Uh, the Seahawks, 26, the Broncos, 20. It was a solid game um, in Seattle. The Seahawks, the defense really stepped up in this game, which is why they were able to win this game. And then the O-line struggled definitely. Um, and I feel like this has been a common pattern with a couple of these teams in Week 1. Their, their O-line allowing a ton of unnecessary QB hits, QB pressures, QB sacks. Moving on to the Broncos. Um, the run game was good. Uh, Javante Williams got in there. Some good running um, from their backs um, that showed strong in the win. And then something not good on the other hand for Denver. Bo Nix did not look good. There was a lot of hype coming in the preseason. But I don't know. I mean, we've seen rookies struggle a ton. In that first career game, Caleb Williams didn't look very good in the first half, but he showed up in the second half. Um, but Bo Nix did not look good. Um, we'll just have to see. Moving on to the Browns. I mean, the offense sucked. The defense sucked. Heck, special teams even sucked. I mean, nothing went well for the Browns. Um, They were down, I don't know, I think they were down like 21-3 at one point. Um, but then the Cowboys let off. Uh, Browns were able to score some touchdowns. Um, so, and then the, for the Cowboys, um, the defense was cooking and they really showed out, showed up in the win. Um, and then a con is that they still have some contract gaps to fill. Um, Micah Parsons is expected to be next. And by the way, the score of that game, 33-17, uh, Cowboys over Browns. Sorry for that. And then. The Buccaneers at the Commanders for the Bucks. They won 37-20 at the Buccaneers. Defense and offense were both strong. Just like the Cowboys game, the offense rolled. But the defense did let up um, in the second half. A great showing um, by the Buccaneers. Baker cooked, Mike cooked, Chris cooked. Uh, a lot of good things coming out of that game in Tampa. And then for the Commanders, I mean, to be honest... The offense, eh, they, they improved in the fourth quarter, but obviously, obviously it was too late. Um, so, I don't know. We'll just have to see how that pans out um, for the Commanders. Obviously, they started 3-0 and last year, missed the playoffs by quite a few games. So, I don't know. And then for the Rams, moving on, the Rams lost 26-20 to the Lions on Sunday Night Football. Stafford was great. Even though they lost, he had a couple of touchdowns. I think he had a pick and like 300 yards, so solid. Even even though he was very good, the O line was not, um, which is very impressive that he was able to complete as many passes, score as many touchdowns, get as get as many yards as he actually did. And then for the Lions, the run game was on point. Jameson Williams and Damon Montgomery cooked um, the living crap out of the out of the Rams defense, and then. Something bad I saw was the defense could have been better. They were still good, but definitely could have been better, um, especially because the Rams didn't have Puka. And I think going back to 2022, I mean, that game reminded me a lot of the Rams, um, Cooper Cup, Matthew Stafford connection that they had uh, throughout that playoff run. And then the Chiefs at Ravens in Arrowhead. Ravens' offense was great. Um, Lamar cooked. The run game was okay, and Isaiah likely went off. And then for the Chiefs, I mean, Patrick Mahomes was solid, okay. Uh, uh, one touchdown, one interception. Uh, the main talk has been Xavier Worthy. Three touchdowns in your first career game as a wide receiver, running a 4-2-1. Bro. Xavier Worthy is winning MVP. I'm calling it. Xavier Worthy is winning MVP. I don't care. I don't care what you say. He's winning MVP. And then to Brazil 
for the Packers. So, some things they really have to figure out. Who is going to be their quarterback? I know they traded for Malik, but <sighs> they have a lot of things to figure out right now. Um, the defense... Defense was okay. 34 points, you know, you never want to let up 34 points. But scoring 29, that's still good. But definitely, you have to look back and be like, okay, well, we definitely could have prevented this, and that probably would have led us to the win. But hey, and then for the Eagles, just like the Packers, the defense could have been better, obviously allowing 29 points. But they still got the win. And then Saquon. That man is a beast. He went off. Three touchdowns in your first game as an Eagle. Sorry, Giants fans. But that was just great for him, for Philly. Um, I think that was awesome. And Jalen Hurts really did well as well. Yeah, that will wrap it up. That is my week one recap. Thank you for tuning in. Again, to Inside the 20, make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Please tell your friends. Tell anybody you know. Tell your dog uh, to watch my videos. Um, but yeah, thank you.